All right, everybody, this is Zane from Really Easy AI, and uh, yeah, let's continue. This is the second uh, video in our series on enterprise products. We're doing Google Cloud. Uh, we just got finished talking about Skills Boost and all the things about Skills Boost. Um, and now I want to do a bit of a deep dive into courses. I am making this one public because I want folks to see kind of what's coming. But this will most likely be the last video that is public and the rest will be members only, just so you know. Uh, by the way, if you want to become a member, it's super easy to do. Uh, membership does have its privileges. Uh, we've got two levels, Artificial Narrow Intelligence, level one, $1.99 a month. You get loyalty badges, some emojis, discounted merchandise, and most notably, members only videos. The, these videos, the, the enterprise videos will be available to members at all levels. Now, if you want to get hardcore, you really like my content, you can go Artificial General Intelligence Level 2, $4.99 a month, and uh, you get all the perks from the previous levels, of course, and then you get priority reply to comments as needed. Again, I try to reply to every comment, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, and early access to new videos, which is why most people get it, because I queue my stuff up weeks in advance. So you will get very early access to my stuff. Um, so if that's what you want, uh, definitely do it. If all you want is the enterprise stuff, you can do $1.99 a month. If you want the whole uh, shooting match, you can do $4.99 a month. Would love to have you as a member. Uh, joining is easy, just on the uh, channel page. Just go to join and you should be in business. So looking forward to having you. All right, so let's jump into this examining course information. So assuming at this point that you've been able to get into Skills Boost, you've signed up, um, hopefully just for free at this point, because all we're focused on is free stuff anyway. There's no sense in doing even a monthly cost uh, yet, because we're going to focus on free stuff first. Uh, then um, uh, we're ready to dig into specifics about courses. So last time we looked at learning paths. Um, now we're going to dig into the specifics of a course and what they're all about. So here, assuming you've gone to cloudskillsboost.google, uh, um, and now we're looking at our various paths, we're going to start with the beginner uh, path here, Introduction to Generative AI Learning. From here, we can see all the, the things that we've done. You notice I've completed a ton of these because I've already done it, but they snuck one in on me here. So I was starting down that road and I'll finish that up. Prompt Design and Vertex AI. So, uh, but I've completed all the other ones. So uh, what we're gonna do here is uh, now that we're seeing the overview of our path. So when you click on a path, you can see the overview of the path. We talked about this last time. Shows you all the courses in the path, gives you a quick summary, it's a course. 45 minutes, introductory course, it gives you some points. Uh, what I want to do is kind of dig into that information a little more and explore it a little deeper. So let's go ahead and, and click on the first one here, Introduction to Generative AI. And so there's a lot going on here I want to look at. Uh, first and foremost, <coughs> notice again we get, uh, for this specific course now, how long it is, 45 minutes. Um, what level it is, introductory level, the cost, which is important, no cost, good news, and the points. Now, of all the things, the points may be a little confusing to you. What uh, Google has done is they've gamified um, <coughs> taking the courses, and they give you points for it, and you can get you know different levels. I'll kind of show you here. In fact, I think I have it queued up. Yeah, so let me show you how this works out. So if you... Notice in the upper right here, once you're logged in, you'll have these points. It'll probably say zero points for you like it does for me. Um, but if you click on that, it should take you to your point area. Um, that's going to show you, you know, your profile pic, your name, how long you've been a member, and how many points you've accumulated. Now, uh, you can decide whether or not to make your profile public or private. I've made mine public. If you do have a public profile, it will show a nice, uh, prettier view of where you're at. So here you can see, again, uh, picture, name, how long I've been a member, what league I'm in. I'm in the Gold League. Um, and then as people scroll down, you can make this available like to prospective employers if you want. Um, they can see all the things that you've done. So this was a great way to showcase completion badges as well as skills badges because um, completion badges by default don't show up in places like Credly. 
So all you'll get are skills badges and credly and certifications. So they really wanted a way to highlight completion that you've completed stuff and for you to display that to folks. And so that they came up with this idea of gamification where you earn points and then you join these various leagues. Now let's dig into that a little deeper because I think it's a cool idea. Um, so uh, if we come down here, you can see there's different leagues. There's, uh, I don't think I can click between them, but there's actually bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. Uh, and if you click on, uh, there's a little, kind of a hard to see here, a little question mark over here to the right when you're looking at the leagues. If you click on that, that'll get you to your FAQs. And I believe I even have FAQs spun up here. Yeah, so let's go through the FAQs. Uh, how do you earn points? You earn points by simply, you know, doing activities, what, what, all kinds of stuff in uh, Skills Boost. Um, what are the leagues? Leagues are grouped into different tiers. There's four leagues, bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. All learners begin in bronze, so you guys will start in bronze and then climb to higher leagues as you earn points. Uh, you've got leaderboards, which are cool uh, and, and kind of nice. By default, it doesn't do your name. It does like a random name on the leaderboard, so you can't... Uh, actually, I don't know if you can change that, but you do have leaderboards for uh, things that you're working on. Um, and uh, after earning some points, you'll be placed into a new leaderboard with 29 other learners from your league. Well, you'll compete to earn the most points. Leaderboards for last, uh, last for a week, starting from when they were first created. At the end of the week, the top 10 learners will earn a promotion to the next highest league if one exists, and the bottom five learners will be demoted down to the next lowest league if one exists. Only the points you earn during each week count towards that week's leaderboard, with all learners starting at zero points when the leaderboard is first created. What happens if I take a break from learning? Not a problem. After your current leaderboard finishes, you will not be placed into a new leaderboard until you earn points again. So it, after you've you know done your thing, earned your points, if you want to take a break, it's fine. You won't, you won't go up or down. But honestly, um, it doesn't matter. Is it a possibility I lose points? Yeah, they may do a reset. Uh, uh, how do other learners see me? They see your selected av avatar and an anonymized username. Uh, they won't see your picture or your real name. So I guess you can't change that. And then player names are randomly generated. And can you opt out? Yes, you can. So one question they don't answer is, do I get anything out of earning points? The answer today is no, nothing but bragging rights. And it's kind of cool, though, especially if you're showing a prospective employer your public... Um, profile, it's kind of cool to show them what league you're in, right? Especially if you're in the higher leagues like gold or diamond. So that's a pretty cool deal. So you may want to consider that as a nice to have. I think it is a very nice to have. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. The rest of it just kind of lays out what you have here. Paths that you're working on, activities that you've done, leaderboards and badges. So you got your paths uh, that you've completed and you're currently working on. You can add additional paths. You've got your activities. These are things that you've uh, done, quizzes that you've taken, that sort of thing. All kinds of activities that you've engaged in, um, and quizzes and skills tests and so on and so forth, labs. And you got so very, very cool stuff there. Um, leaderboards, uh, exactly what we were just talking about. And then your badges, of course, will show all your badges, your completion badges and your skills badges. So that's what that's about. I think it's a cool thing to have, personally. I kind of dig on it. Uh, and certainly if you're making your profile public, I think it's a good idea. All right, so uh, real quick, let's focus on the badges for a second. There are two kinds of badges you can earn. Um, there are completion badges for just completing a course. Uh, the, the, they look like this. They literally say just completion badge. Congratulations, you completed something. They're an indicator of your progress. And then there are skills badges that you get, uh, which are higher level badges, which indicate a, a deeper knowledge in some area. So um, keep that in mind. I believe, uh, I believe only skills badges show up in the Credly. Yeah, only skills badges show up in your Credly. So... Um, when you're looking at your Credly stuff, uh, you're only going to see the skills badges. You won't see the, um, you won't see, uh, and certifications, of course, but you won't see completion badges. So they needed a cool way 
to do completion badges. By the way, you'll also see certificates if you've earned them, but uh, we're not really dealing with certificates. So skills badges are cool for showing on your Credly account. Uh, they're definitely recognition of a deeper level of knowledge. Obviously, certifications are the pinnacle, uh, but then your public profile for your um, uh, for your status for Cloud Skills Boost can also be used to demonstrate your progress towards goals. All right. Very, very cool. So we did the two types of badges, completion badges and skills badges. Um, let's go through the course then, see what that's all about. So as you begin going through a course, as you're looking at a course and you're thinking, okay, well, I want to go through this course. So let me go back to the course here. Uh, let's see here. Google Cloud, get back into our generative AI. Nope, that's not where I wanted to go. Let's give, let me go back to my pass. Hmm. It wants me to pick up where I left off. I'm trying to go back and do stuff here. All right, here we go. So as we dig into a course, um, there's a variety of things that you're going to be hit with. First and foremost is, uh, you know, obviously the course overview. As I'm scrolling down the web page, it's going to tell you uh, what the course is about. Introductory to Generative AI, for example, is an introductory level micro learning course aimed at explaining what Generative AI is, how it's used, and how it differs from traditional machine learning methods. It also covers Google tools to help you adult develop your own Gen AI, Gen AI apps. Now, it's going to show you exactly what the course contains, how many videos, how many documents, and how many quizzes. That's going to be important. And it's also going to show you your status. By the way, notice you can do these out of order. You don't have to do them in order. You can do them out of order if you want to. Uh, in, I think in most cases, any order you want. There's another dirty little secret. If you're a higher level and all you're trying to do is just kind of get your completion or skills badge and you know or you feel confident that you have the knowledge, you don't even have to do the courses. You can skip right to the quiz or any of the required items. All you have to do is complete the required items to get your completion badge or your skills badge or whatever it is you're trying to do. Now, is that recommended? No, absolutely not. Uh, I don't do it personally either. I never skip. Uh, I, I did it in this case for demonstration purposes, but I'd already completed this one. Um, and this isn't really skipping, by the way, because I didn't do the required. I'll, I'll always go through the material, even if it's kind of boring, and it can be, um, just to make sure I kind of get a sense of what's available, where I'm headed, what the course really is about, if my perceptions of the course align with what Google's telling me the course is about, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll go through the material, then I'll do the quiz. That is the best way to do it. It guarantees you a higher score of the quiz, first and foremost, but it also makes sure that you put in the work, that you've done the time, put in the work, and really uh, are trying to understand things. Now, when it comes to understanding things, let's talk about that for a minute. There are essentially three ways to understand things when you're taking Google training. The right way, the wrong way, and the Google way. When you are going to understand things, you want to understand things the Google way, because the Google way is the way that they're presenting it to you. Now, when you're with a customer, that you know, obviously it changes to the right way to do it, but when you're doing this, you're taking quizzes or you're getting ready to do exams or any of that stuff, or just learning about Google, you want to do things the Google way. Most of the time, the Google way overlaps with the right way, but not always. All right, so once uh, so we'll give you an overview of the sections in this course. So here's an overview of the course, everything in the course, all the things, the videos, the documents, and quizzes in the course, and then uh, your next steps. You can get your course badge and do the course survey. At the end of it, you'll always get your uh, course completion badge, and then typically they'll ask you to do a course survey. Try to do the survey if you can. Uh, because it, it definitely, you know, give uh, as good a feedback as you can on what you liked and what you didn't like about it. It really helps the folks as they're developing these courses. All right, so notice, not only do they ha I have this kind of overview here, but I have it on the left-hand side too. This is my navigation pane on the left-hand side. So I'm on the course overview, but I can click on, you know, I, and this, by the way, can be collapsed or expanded. I can click on Take Me to Introduction to Generative AI start right in on the course here um, and and this is how i'll begin launching the course if i want now i can do it from there or again i could go back here 
to the list, click on the link. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're gonna wind up at the same place. I prefer to use the navigation on the left-hand side to go where I'm gonna go. Now notice this first item was a video, so of course, as you might expect, it starts playing a video, which you could look at. The next item was reading. Um, pretty much all the courses will have a set of suggested readings. And again, it's one of those things where you might get a little burned out later on. You're like, I really don't feel like going through the reading. You don't have to go through all of it, but I do uh, suggest that you uh, scan it, see if there's something that looks interesting to you, and then um, uh, and then pick out those that look interesting to you, right? It's meant to be kind of an addendum, really nice to know about, things that, you know, that can help you with your general knowledge um, uh, to further what you've read about. That's what the readings are for, right? Um, notice they say 30 minutes because uh, uh, here's the time it may take to browse you through the reading resources. Just browse. Just browsing will take you 30 minutes as you're clicking on stuff, seeing stuff that looks interesting to you, seeing things you want to know more about, etc., etc. So keep that in mind. I do, again, suggest that you browse the readings, look for those things that are interesting to you, and then go through them uh, and make sure that you, you know, have a comfort level with some of the things that maybe you want to learn more about. Okay. All right. And then the last thing, of course, is the quiz. In this case, it's the only required thing. Generally, when you take a quiz, you're going to have a, an interactive quiz. There will be a passing score that's required. Usually, it's 80%. It could be, I don't think I've ever seen a higher, maybe a little lower sometimes. And then you'll go through and simply answer questions on the quiz. Um, and then once you're done, you'll click on submit. Now, uh, if memory serves, I think you get, uh, I want to say you get three tries and you have to wait for a few hours before you can do it again. So this is yet another reason why I suggest you go ahead and go through the material first. Go through all the material and that way when you're going through the quiz, you can answer it um, authoritatively and understand, you know, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that from the content, right? Um, that's how you should approach it. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to, uh, the next item will be going through these things and, and, and uh, doing the paths and the courses. Um, just a heads up and, and so you understand what we're going to be doing. I'm not going to be playing the videos for you. I'm going to expect you to do that. I'll, I'll talk about, hey, you need to watch this video looked at these readings. I will point out the things that were interesting to me in the readings for you. Um, and then for the quizzes, of course, I'm not going to give you the answers. That's not my goal here. Uh, they're meant to test your knowledge. Uh, but uh, we will discuss the quizzes and, and talk about, you know, hey, some of the things that you may want to consider, the quiz questions. Uh, beyond that, uh, the biggest thing that uh, we're going to be doing in the enterprise stuff is the labs. We're going to be doing deep dives beyond what just the labs give us. Uh, I want to do that so that we can, you know, go through a whole bunch of stuff. And that's really the, the key element here. This one doesn't actually have a lab, so it's not indicative of the kind of the deep dive we're going to do. But it is indicative overall of the course thrust, right? The different kinds of things you're going to come across. All right, I think we'll end it there. And then the next section, we'll actually start getting into um, the first path and start looking at the paths and going through them and talking about each course in the path, suggestions, what you need to think about, and so on and so forth. Uh, hopefully you're excited and ready to get going down these paths. And, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll make this happen. Hopefully you're pumped. I'm pumped. I'm excited. Even though I've done it before, I'm excited to go back through it again and doing some of the new stuff because they've updated it. So anyway, let's do this. Uh, let's jump into this and become Google Cloud Professionals. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.